Thank you for hiring on a Bembridge Marine 6.5m ribs. In the bow you'll find a cleat and a fair lead for mooring. Under the sun cushion you'll find an anchor locker with anchor, chain and rope. Under the front seat you'll find the life raft, fire extinguisher and the battery switches. You'll also find the boat's battery switches, one for the engine and one for the boat's electrics. These both need to be switched on when you get on board. If you find one of the batteries goes flat while you're out, you're able to turn the boat switch, which is the one with the yellow section, to the yellow section to jump start both batteries. After jumping the battery together for a little while, the boat switch needs to be switched back to on. The boats are fitted with ACR units. This unit charges both batteries when the engine's running and separates both batteries when the engine's turned off. This reduces the risk of having two flat batteries. If you need to remove the life raft, undo the catch in the front of the console, tilt the console back, slide the life raft forward out of its holder and then pull it up out onto deck. Follow the instructions on the life raft to deploy. To fit the key into the ignition, push the key in with the flat side facing up. Place the kill cord around your leg, like shown. To attach the kill cord, hang the black loop over the switch and click it into the up position. If you fall over, the switch will click down and turn off the engine. If the skipper was to fall over the side with the kill cord, the crew are able to flick the switch back onto run with their fingers, make sure the engine's in neutral, restart and go and collect their skipper. To get the switch back to the off position so you can hang the black loop back on, use the key to push down the small hole to click the switch back to off. On the control handle you'll find the engine trim up and trim down button. The engine will only start if the gear shift lever is in the neutral position. For safety, the shift lever locks itself into neutral each time it passes through the neutral position. To get the engine into gear, squeeze the safety trigger and push the lever forward or reverse. The further you push it, the faster you'll go. On the dashboard you'll find the GPS, the VHF, the navigation light switch, the boat's call sign, the engine information gauge, the engine fuel gauge, the steering wheel, compass and the control lever. To turn on the GPS, push and hold the red button. Along the top of the chart you'll see speed over ground, compass position, the boat's position and GPS readout, the time and the depth. You can zoom in or zoom out by using the button or use your fingers on the screen like a smartphone. If you want to choose a different way of seeing the information, you can use the Pages button to change the view on screen. You can drag the chart across the screen to visit other places before you go there. If you do this, the screen will stay where your finger last touched. To return the unit to being a marine satnav, push clear cursor at the top of the screen. The engine gauge gives you different readouts from the engine management system. Most of these will be no interest to you. Below is the fuel tank gauge to show you how much fuel you have in your tank. Because of the pitch and the roll of the sea, the fuel tank gauge can be a little inaccurate at times. The engine management gauge will calculate how much fuel you've used since you last zeroed it. When you fill a tank, if you push both buttons together, it will re-zero the gauge. We will have zeroed the gauges before you pick the boat up. The boat has a 100 litre tank. Using this mode, you can get a more accurate idea of how much fuel you've used. For safety, the needle gauge will show empty when you have about 20 litres of fuel left in the tank. To turn them on, push and hold down the main round button. The same round button, if you touch it lightly, will bring up volume and squelch. 
You can scroll up and down channels using the handset up and down buttons. We fitted a quick check sticker on the dashboard with all the most commonly used channels around the Solent. Don't forget you have the high and low power button on the mic. If you're just calling a marina a very short distance, use low. If you're trying to call a long distance, use high. If you're hiring from Sea View and need to call a water taxi, Sea View slip use P4 and that's where zero should be. All modern VHF have a DSC distress button. If you're in dire need of rescue, you can lift and push down the button under the red cap for 10 seconds. This will alert the Coast Guard and all VHFs in the area that you are in distress and your position. Under the boat's helm seat, you'll find the fuel filler, a bucket, a baler, a funnel safety pack for the boat and a second fire extinguisher. The fuel filler is on the side of the console. Don't forget it's petrol only. If you do fill it with diesel, you will lose your deposit. You'll be given a list of all the boat's onboard equipment. In the aft you'll find the bilge pump. You can test it by twisting the test switch on the side of the pump. In the extremely rare event of having an engine fire, immediately turn off the engine's battery switch. If the fire continues, do not attempt to take off the engine cover. Undo the fire port bung, aim the extinguisher inside and deploy. Refit the bung and wait. If needs be, use a second extinguisher a few minutes later. On the engine cover you'll find a secondary trim switch. When you get on board, please check the engine's propeller for damage. If you are in any way unhappy, and it's a small amount of damage, just take a photograph before you start. If it's a large amount of damage, please call Bemidge Marine. The engine has warning alarms. Most commonly, the engine may overheat if it picks up some debris in its water intakes. These are the intakes in front of the propeller. As you can see from the picture, this engine has sucked up some weed. Simply clear the weed from the holes and restart. If the engine does overheat or has low oil pressure, a warning horn will sound in the control box. The engine will also shut itself down to a safe working load, which is about 1000 revs. This will not reset unless you turn the key off and on again. If you've checked and there's no debris in the intakes and you suspect it may have low oil pressure, please drive at a slow speed to the nearest safe anchorage, turn off and call Bemidge Marine. Life jackets must be worn on board at all times when the boat is underway. The life jacket will inflate automatically if you fall in the water. Alternatively, you can pull the red toggle on the bottom of the life jacket to inflate it immediately. Make sure the jacket is tightly secured around your waist and if you choose to, you can have a crutch strap as well for extra safety. We're licensed to a very strict operating area. This is from Bembridge Lifeway Station to Chichester Harbour and from the Needles to Hearst Castle. You cannot go on the south side of the island. There are a number of underwater obstacles to watch out for around the Solent. Just outside Portsmouth is Horse Sands Fort. Running from the fort to shore is a Second World War anti-submarine barrier. It's a series of blocks just under the surface. It's clearly marked. It has one opening which you can go through. Ride Sands runs between Ride Pier and Sea View. It's roughly twice as far out as Ride Pier, so be aware of it. It's marked by red metal poles in the ground. Keep well away and keep an eye on the GPS. West of Ride Sands is Binstead Beach, also Players Beach. There's some large rocks in the middle of the sandy shore. We recommend you stay well offshore. Just to the west of Fishbourne Car Ferry Terminal is Wooten Rocks. They're marked by Red Pole and Royal Victoria Yacht Club moor their sailing boats just behind them. The rocks are just below the surface at high tide, so avoid this area. Between Cowes and Southampton is Bramble Bank. It's a small sand bank. It only dries out twice a year, but it's quite shallow in the area. It's marked by a weather station. Between Yarmouth and Allen Bay is Cowell Bay, where the hut's situated. Just after Cowell Bay is Warden Ledge. If you're leaving Cowell Bay and heading towards Allen Bay, watch the GPS and keep well offshore. Please remember we are here to help you if you have any questions at all about the boat. Please don't hesitate to call any time on the mobile numbers that are provided. 
thanks again for hiring.